The AK-47 pattern of rifles is world-renowned for its rugged reliability and being chambered in the now legendary 762 by 39 cartridge. Now the biggest caliber it's been chambered in up until this point was a variant chambered in 30-06 Springfield, which is nothing to sneeze at. It's the uh, caliber that the M1 Garand was designed to fire. That being said, you can't be afraid to dream a bit bigger, darling. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you of course know about the AK-50 project from its first test fire to the cycling V2 prototype. Now, most recently, you probably saw our update about the 3D printed mock-up of the V3 AK-50, AKA the one that's going to look sexy, the one that's gonna look like a real finished gun. Now, thanks to a lot of man hours in the shop and of course our partnership with Titans of CNC, amongst other things, we pretty much have all of the parts. This is getting exciting. So today we're gonna to talk about what all we have here, including some stuff you guys haven't even seen before, as well as what there is left to do before this thing gets firing. So I guess the biggest thing you guys haven't seen yet is this right here, the receiver. As we've talked about before, we've got a nice little bulge here, it's sexy. Trunnion bulge, very reminiscent of the front trunnion bulge on the RPK series, like the light machine gun variants of the AKs. This is for additional support, both physical and emotional. But yeah, as you can see, this is a stamped receiver. Part of what we were testing on the V2 was if it was possible to use a uh, stamped receiver instead of a milled receiver on the AK. Well, on the AK-50 specifically. Like obviously on, on an AKM, you can you use a stamped receiver. Most AKs are stamped but would it be able to hold up under the intense operating pressure of a 50 BMG? So on the AK-50 V2, we literally used straight off the shelf, just fucking stamped tubing. Riveted on our components, like our rear trunnion and our front trunnion, you know, the thing that holds the pressure and the lockup, but we'll get to that later. And the answer was yes, as it turns out. Well, that seemed to work well. That's why we have this piece here, which as you can tell is no longer off the shelf, uh, just steel tube. This is a, a custom job that was done for us by Yankovic. We appreciate his help on the project. But you see where we got our magazine dimple here. Again, another feature from the AK, the stamped AK variants. On the AK-50 here, it's both for integrity, you know, the dimple gives it a little bit of extra strength here, where we have a giant cutout for the magazine. And secondly, just because it looks dope. At the end of the day, it's an AK and it's not afraid to let you know where it came from. Now, if you're also a fan of dimples, whether that be face, receiver, back, you know, whatever, take your pick, you should go ahead and subscribe. So let's face it, dimples of all variety, pretty sexy. See, much like the AKM, we have our welded in lower rails that help guide the bolt and carrier as they're traveling through the receiver, which includes our shark fin ejector, which on our bolt ejects right in there. So boom, the weapon fires, the bolt unlocks, it moves rearward through the receiver, and it gets right about to there, which is where the ejector comes through that little slot in the bolt and kicks the round out to the top right side of the receiver. And then, of course, it cycles through the gun, comes back forward, loads up another round. Now, of course, we do have a little bit of excess on the rear of this receiver. We haven't quite cut it down to size yet, but this is still gonna be a big bitch. Speaking of big bitches, this is a standard long rivet for an AK. This is a long rivet for the AK-50. Uh, this is significantly chunkier. So a short rivet is exactly what it sounds like. So here's our, our rear trunnion, for example. Um, you see these holes here, and they're mirrored on both sides. It doesn't go all the way through. What it does is it just goes and sticks out far enough so that you crush the rivet on the inside. So you put four short rivets here instead of two long ones. The long ones are just for a little bit of extra girthy support there in the rear. Fucking, that's what she said. And these go in through here, and as you can see, all these rivets are countersunk for extra support, meaning the receiver is dimpled into those holes, so it grabs the sheet metal even tighter, and it goes out there through the other side, where it's you know cut to size and then smashed into the other countersunk and dimpled side of the receiver. So the rivet head is formed, and then you have a big ass rear trunnion that is not fucking going anywhere. So another part you guys haven't seen before is the handguard. And let me tell you, this is a cautionary tale of what happens when you don't work with Titans of CNC. I believe whatever third party machine shop did this for us uh, had precision in their name, which is evident by the quality. Look at that perfectly symmetrical 
Picatinny rail. That's probably usable for something, I guess. Also, the difference in wall thickness side to side is kind of staggering. These cuts are there for a reason, and they're supposed to be in line with each other. They're not. So this is potentially usable. Fuck it, who knows? You wonder why AK-50 shit takes so long sometimes? <laughs> shit like this. That, that's fucking why. Little fatherly advice here, since so many of you consider me a, a father figure to you because you come from broken homes, I assume. Sometimes in life, you can do everything exactly right. And that still doesn't mean there isn't somebody waiting right around the corner to fuck you in the ass. As a quick aside, a lot of people have been suggesting different targets to test this new AK-50 prototype on. I think I found the perfect one. Our homies over at Americana Pipe Dream sent us these cool blue helmets. Belgian. I wonder what these could be for. Either way, I hope they don't do any sort of peacekeeping operations over on the ranch. That'll end poorly for them. But you see, the Americana Pipe Dream guys are actually moving over into a new warehouse, which means they're having to get rid of a bunch of extra surplus stuff. You know, just to make their transition easier. It is 2023 after all. But if you want to take advantage of that, you can use the code BUSSIN for 10% off because surplus is quite bussin'. But check my boys out with the link in the description in the pinned comment because they are quite simply bussin' indeed. For real, for real. <laughs> Anyhow, before I accidentally overdose on fucking Zoomer cringe aids, uh, let's talk about the piston. <laughs> so this is something that we've talked about before, but I've never been able to show you in steel. So this is our hinged piston. Basically what this allows us to do is disassemble the gun. You see, once the bolt carrier group is going through the receiver and it gets to the rear, the front of the piston is still captured inside the front trunnion, or at least the loop that this is going to be forming here. So what we're doing about that is allowing the bolt carrier to come out while the piston is still in here and basically come out as whole, like one entire whole unit. This is again, as previously mentioned, directly borrowed from another Kalashnikov rifle the PKM light machine gun. I also did want to point out too, on this prototype, we have an adjustable piston. So this piston head is threaded. And as you can see, in the middle of those threads, we have a slot. So basically what that allows us to do is thread in this piston head as much as we need to. If we're alleviating gas, uh, gas chamber pressure or we need more, we can thread it out or thread it in. And then which, wherever it's at, we can just run a pin through there and capture it so it can't thread on or off anymore. That way we can adjust gas pressure on the fly without having to take our gas block off every time. And you know, redrill the gas port and all. I like this, it makes our lives easier. We also have our gas tube vented for her pleasure. And here we have our rear trunnion slash buffer assembly. The buffer assembly was something that we tried out on the V2. Basically, we have a much stronger spring here in the rear uh, where our recoil spring fits in. So we have our main spring here that fits into this piece where when the bolt carrier comes all the way back and hits this piece, we have an extra strong buffer in the rear that basically makes it so it's not just a hard impact into the rear trunnion. And of course we have different springs here that we can experiment in. We can make it you know, lighter, heavier, whatever we decide we need to do. But I think it's a cool concept. So we carried it over from V2 to V3. Also, as you can see here, the parts that we got in from Titans have now been heat treated. So the, they are appropriately hard for the task that we are giving them. Okay, pieces are all bricked up. Also, our stamp dust cover is now finished as well. Uh, we don't have it in hand yet, but it is on the way. But as soon as it does get here, uh, the Picatinny rail is ready and waiting for it. Have our gas block here, of course, nothing fancy. You've seen it before. Now for something that I think looks really cool that I'm, I'm kind of stoked to show off is our front trunnion barrel assembly. So you can see, barrel's pretty much done. So the front trunnion, obviously, where the bolt locks into place, we've got our locking lugs there. We've talked about this one before. This is the part that makes sure that you don't explode because, you know, 50 cals are pretty fucking beefy. There's a lot of pressure going on there. That's why this part is beefier than it was in the V2, as well as having these bulges as well for extra support where it counts. Something, something bulges where it counts. All right, so now here to talk about the design of the barrel where we have these big flutes here. These flutes will be somewhat hidden by the handguard. They'll be, they'll be underneath. Our gas block will go right about here. And then we have these smaller flutes up at the front. Fluting, if you're not familiar, is a well-established industry practice uh, where you, know, you take these kind of cuts out of the barrel here. Uh, these are your flutes, 
Basically, the purpose of this is to dr dramatically reduce weight while also kind of increasing uh, your, your heat mitigation. As you see, because you've made these flutes, you have more surface area on the barrel for air to contact it and remove heat from it. It's also especially helpful on 50 cals like this because you're taking weight away from the front end of the gun. And believe it or not, even though you're taking cuts out of the barrel like this, because geometry is kind of fucking weird sometimes, you're not actually taking away from the structural integrity of the barrel either. At least if you're doing it properly and not, you know, cutting the fucking bore. But you'd know all this about fluting if only you'd signed up for the Sonoran Desert Institute or SDI. A great place to get your start in gunsmithing and weapons design. You see that? That integration just gets better every fucking time. Main sponsor of the channel, go ahead and check them out. Anyhow, another piece here I want to show off for you guys is the muzzle brake. So this is, again, a play on the JMAC RRD4C. JMAC Customs being a good friend of ours, old, old industry friend of mine. They were the ones you actually made this for me back in the day. The original AK-50 muzzle brake, which actually was in the first firing prototype. Actually, this was in every firing prototype of the AK-50 so far, now that I think about it. Just super cool, but we thought we could take a little bit of heft off of it. So that is what we did. So between the weight taken off the muzzle brake by slimming it down some and the weight taken off of the barrel with all of this fluting up here, uh, we are just over a pound and a half weight savings on the front end of the gun, just between those two things alone. A pound and a half may not sound like a whole lot, but when you're talking about holding something up that far away from your body, let's say if you were gonna try to fire this thing standing, uh, a pound and a half makes a lot of difference when it's on the end of the gun. Our projected weight on this bad boy is looking to be somewhere around 29 pounds, somewhere in that range, which puts us just about a pound or two heavier than the Barrett M82A1. Not bad, considering we had to add a gas system, whereas theirs operates on short recoil. So all things considered, I'm fairly happy with those numbers, but we'll see how it works. So now I'm gonna show you something real cool before we go. Now this here is the beginning of our bump rivet, or in this case, I guess more of a bump pin. Now a bump rivet is something that's been showing up in AKs in the last you know, couple decades. It's a new way of camming the bolt or starting the initial rotation of the bolt into lockup. I remember when I mentioned that 30-06 AK before, well, this is it. Uh, if you guys are uh, curious about this sort of thing, um, I think it's pretty neat. Let me know down in the comments if you want a video on this. It's kind of neat to see the AK returning to its 30-06 roots that it started with with the M1 Garand. I think that's kind of, you know, a little fucking circular to be honest, but hey, I think it's neat. Anyhow, if you look on the side, this also has a bump rivet. So what that does, go topless real quick. If you can see through here, that pin right there in front of the chamber, what this does is it starts the rotation of the bolt. So the bolt comes in contact with it on that side and it just tips it up enough that it can rotate because the AK cannot rotate until it has been rotated a little bit externally, like by the bump pin. So that is what starts the rotation. Otherwise, you'd risk the, the early rotation of the bolt, which might jam it up in the receiver. So there's a flat spot in the cam groove that doesn't allow it to do that until it's been tipped one way, and then it can freely rotate. See the AK-50? Works in much the same way. So we have our bump pin here, which as you can see is faced off a little bit. That is because it is tuned to stop and be retained by the barrel. So we've unscrewed the barrel a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in. That should be about good. And now we have our bump pin engaged. Obviously it's not gonna have all this extra material on the side, but that's, you know, it, the part isn't quite finished. But what this allows us to do is we flip up our trunnion like so. We take our bolt and our cam groove here, by the way, which are working wonderfully together. So here we have our extractor as well, which works perfectly. So we have our completed, don't worry, there's no firing pin in it. We're not at risk of, you know, exploding here, which theoretically it would be fine. This actually could fire as is if I had a firing pin. Because uh, after we got this back from heat treat, uh, the bolt is hard, front trunnion's hard, I'm hard, it'll all work out. So if this bump pin didn't work, this would literally just stop out of battery and not allow it to rotate. But let's go ahead and try this. Fit it in the trunnion. And it goes into battery flawlessly. A little rickety there, because you know I don't have a receiver rails that are you know dead straight that are helping me guide it in, but comes in, goes in, rotates, comes out. Rinse and repeat for 10 rounds and then reload. This is what your parents were doing when they went out of town on that anniversary vacation, by the way. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Your parents have a loveless marriage. And then once it comes out of battery and slides back through the receiver under pressure of recoil, takes the round out. This is the first time that's been done in this mock-up and that actually felt kind of cool. Getting excited again, guys. It's, it's getting close to fitty time. This is always the, the fun part of the project when you know, all the, the, the real hard work has been done as far as like the modeling and you know, getting quotes and making sure that the parts that came in aren't completely fucked and then what to do when they are fucked and then getting more quotes and more parts. That's a clusterfuck. But once we get everything together, well, <clears throat> this is where the fun begins. Still have a few setbacks to overcome, but honestly, this is getting real close to crunch time. So the next AK-50 update we do might just be when we put this fucking thing together. So I'm kind of stoked. I'm excited to see this thing finally come together, how it's supposed to look, like looking like a real production gun. Cause this one's gonna get all blued up and done nice and lipstick and the whole nine. The first time this thing fires a magazine flawlessly in that configuration, I might fucking cry. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that because it is going to be quite the moment. There's really not that many semi-auto 50 cals that have ever been created. So the fact that a couple of young dudes were able to throw this together in a glorified garage is kind of cool. Or who knows, it could explode. But subscribe for that too because that would at least be interesting. Anyhow, I appreciate you guys. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can check out some of this cool merch available at my store, Bunker Branding. Links in the description and pinned comment as always, including the Let's Go Brandon AK-50 shirt, because God knows I need all the encouragement I can fucking get and a couple brain cells if you have them to borrow. But anyhow, I hope this update excites you guys as much as it excites me, because we're, we're coming down to crunch time. But I appreciate you guys staying to the end. And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Now the biggest caliber it's ever been chambered. Now the biggest caliber. Now the biggest caliber it's been, it's been fuck me.